the Vantec Polaris. This is an old version, no power switch, uses an external power supply. It's using this power supply, which is what came with it, but it isn't the original one. This is an aftermarket, and it's got a voltage selection switch which has been fixed in place with a bit of tape. I'm not quite sure which position it's actually in. That is on 6 volts. So I've taken the bottom screws out. This one obviously has no battery compartment. Wow, look at the RF module in there. Wow. This is definitely different. So, strip it down. All these posts are cracked. Now what's been requested is to actually have this thing as a battery powered unit and still portable. Right, let's try and get this thing out. With no power switch on it, might be actually easier. Yes it is. Okay, there's a flex, pull this off. So the inside looks very similar to the others. Different buck boost circuit over here. The buzzers move from the air to here. Display section is the same. Voltage regulator down here. So you've got power connector down here. So one side's ground, which comes right around. It's not a flooded plane. This is the IF module. Interesting device. That's what I've seen in some of the early poles as well. Something similar to it. This says 2003 on this one. So power comes in, runs down this side, runs around, comes over to the voltage regulator here, which is a 11215 5 volt regulator. Runs across over here to this resistor pack here. That resistor common there is also linked over to the common over here for the um, resistor divider for the display contrast adjustment. So everything else is 5 volts, just like normal. So instead of boosting up like the new ones do, this one drops down. So anything above 6 volts should be fine. I need to check the specs on this regular. Obviously the less voltage you put through it the better, but it means I can put anything above that. So I'll probably put 12 volts or 7.2 volt battery pack and it will run just fine. Maybe an 8.4 volt would be alright. Could put some lithium cells in it. That would work. So it's about a week later. Batteries have arrived, so I'm just planning out exactly how I'm going to modify this. So my current thinking about how I'm going to do this particular task to get this thing to run off batteries is that I need to add a switch, which I've got here. I'm just going to use this slide switch because it's very much like the original ones that come in these units, so it's very similar functionality, so people will be used to it. I've got these two batteries here, which are 3.6 volt, 1250 milliamp hours, apparently. These will fit inside the casing. AAs won't fit, these are AAAs, only those will fit, so that's why I had to compromise two. I could potentially fit four of them in there, I do actually have two more sitting here, but I think two will be enough. I'm going to do some testing on it and see how it works out, but I think two will be enough. This thing draws 40 milliamps when it's running, I've measured that much at least, so in theory this should last for quite a while. Now I've got a hook up to the supply rail, so this track here is the negative track, zero volt, which is fine, so as you tap onto that, we've got the positive here, which wraps around, I think I mentioned in the previous part of the video, comes around here, runs around, comes to the regulator over here, right, getting put to the regulator. What I'm going to do, I'm going to mount this switch on the bottom casing, not on the top casing, which is how they normally would be, I'm going to put it on the bottom casing, and I'm thinking I might actually mount everything in the bottom casing, and I just have two wires running from the bottom casing to the circuit board, because I could actually wire all that up in here and then run out to this from the switch, just tap it all onto the back of the, the board here without cutting any traces or anything like that. Because right, that's the back of the board which will be accessible when it's in this top casing. So when it's in here it'll be you know, sitting in there like that. And I can get to all these connections. So I could actually I have to think about exactly how I'm going to do that. I may have to cut a track actually. Actually yes. So because I need to add charging, if it didn't have to worry about charging it'd be a bit easier, but charging with power off so it can be charged without being turned on, that means I do have to cut a trace. So the positive trace comes around, maybe you can see it straight through, but if I cut the trace, say over here or some of that, or I don't know if we're exactly where I'll cut it, and then attach the wires to that trace, and then I can run them around. There's nothing on the circuit board here, so maybe I could drill a hole through the board, and see straight through it, and run the wires through the board to it, and anchor them somewhere. Maybe I could do some of that to make it a bit tidier, but if there's gaps around the casing enough, there's not really much of a way of gap, so getting the wires around the edge of the board, I mean, it maybe possible, there is a little bit of a gap there, might be just enough. If there's not quite enough then I'll um, I have to drill a hole through the circuit board and run the wires through that, but that's not such a big problem, so there is space to do that, and um, I'm not worried about doing that. 
So I've mounted everything on the back panel. I can cut a hole in a casing here, attach that switch. Um, attaching it will be tricky. I don't have any ones with screw terminals on them, so I've only got this type. It means I'd have to kind of basically glue it in. But there's not much stress on these switches when they're in place and, and when you're actually using them, they move fairly easily. Gluing them in should be all right. <laughs> I have to make sure I'm quite thorough with that. The battery placement is quite critical, so obviously I need to make sure I don't like get pierced by these pins that stick through the ball and stuff like that. So what I'll probably do is I'll place them on this board in, in the position where I want them to be and double side tape and then place the cover on and then it will obviously stick in the right place on the cover. So that's the plan for that. And I'm basically going to go cut the trace from the input power so that we can go through and that will get directly to the batteries. So that would be drip power to the battery, so even if it's turned off, it will charge batteries up. And the switch will then break that circuit between the charge circuit, which is normally the power input, and the actual normal DC. So that will then take control of that. So when the switch is turned on, then it will power it. So you could actually charge it and power it at the same time. It would be able to do that. Now this regulator here can do like 30 volts or something like that, max input. Running a higher voltage into it to charge the batteries is not an issue at all. Um, and the battery dropout voltage of these would be around 800 millivolts or so, it's like the last you want to go on them. So that takes it really close to what the dropout is. This is a low voltage dropout regulator, so I can actually go down to like 5.4 volts for a size to drop out. That is absolutely perfect. So these batteries drop out, this will drop out, basically. When the battery is completely flat, that's when the regulator also stops working, so it's aligned quite well voltage-wise. And fully charged on these would be like 9 volts, fully charged voltage, which means if you use a 9 volt power supply, and the supply which came with it, which is this off-the-market thing, this is currently set to 6 volts. Well, it's got a 9 volt setting, so I could change that to 9 volts, and you don't even need enough power adapter. So, <laughs> 9 volt input, it will charge the batteries, the regulator can handle 9 volts, no problem at all, and um, it's relatively straightforward. So, let's get on with it. So, as the first stage of mounting the switch, I've cut the hole in, mounted the switch roughly in there. Now, what I've done, the plastic that I've cut out of that hole, is I've remelted around the switch to help hold it in. Now, this isn't actually held in properly, it's barely holding, all right? Um, but that's a good starting point because it's got some nice rigid plastic, which is the same as the original stuff, which gets it kind of wedged in the right place. So it's not really going to move. Now, around this, I'm going to use like hot melt glue or something like that. Something better. I don't know if I can use, maybe I'll melt more plastic around it because I'd rather have plastic than hot melt glue because hot melt glue isn't wonderful for rigidity. So I might see if I can do something else with that. Maybe get some more plastic and melt some more in there just to brace it more but that is basically held in place already right like that that is holding it but I need to do better than that because that's not good enough it's a good start right so I've got hot glue around there as well now I've tried to key it in so like putting little dimples inside the plastic with the soldering iron tip to give it something to key against so it locks sort of locks in so it doesn't move around and gives more of a surface area to attach to and this makes it a bit more solid so I've done that all around there and I mean I think it's gonna be fine it's still cooling down and it's it's not moving at all right now, so it's probably okay. I think between the plastic build-up I did before, which kind of locks it in place, with the hot glue around that just to fill in those little gaps and just stabilise it a little bit more and have some more strength, I think that'll do okay. I mean, it's a bit of a bodge, but it'll work. So, oh, gradually coming along. Batteries are mounted. I've decided to stick them on the board instead. If I do it on the casing, I need to run three wires over. Here, I've only run two wires over. One this wire bit tidier and I can mount them to the circuit board just fine so they're mounted on the board I put some cation tape over them just to add a bit more protection help to tie them together and stop them sliding on the board if cats do come loose um, it should be a bit better I've got to put some more on yet along this edge here but I've mounted a 1.1 amp PTC right here to act as a fuse so that's the main supply coming in so at least it's got some kind of protection it's got a 1 amp PTC which is probably really too big but who knows what the charging current's going to be so I've fitted a 1.1 amp PTC over here so that will help protect it during charging and, and discharging so if something catastrophic happens then it should at least open up and protect it and being a PTC means it will reset itself when it gets corrected so it won't be a permanent like fuse blowing sort of thing I'm going to link these two wires here together I've already put the negatives onto the railway down here I've got the positive to there then I'm going to link these two together I'll do that in some kind of tidy way I suppose I might just cut them really short then once I've got those done, that would actually power up once all these connected up. That should power up. Also, I don't want to do that. So what I need to do is before I actually do the final connections on these batteries, I've got to cut that track on the other side. And as you can see, there is basically no room for wires down here. All right. So I need to do something. But there are these holes in the circuit board just here, 
which I think were meant for mounting posts for the display, which this display doesn't have fitted. I've suddenly got these two here. So those ones aren't actually installed. So I've got holes in the board I could probably use. I'm, I bet I can get wires through those and snake them round without them drilling extra holes. So that seemed perfect. So just about there. I've got this other stuff done. I've just got this last wire to attach here. So the tin it, and then I can attach it. And then that should then actually work. Obviously it's a tight up with wire which runs across to uh, make sure it's not going to rub on any pins or anything like that and get worn through. Get pinched or anything like that, but um, I need to secure that down. But the first start is to get it attached. Make sure our switch is in the opposition. It is. You've already tinned the pin. And when I flick this switch, it should turn on. It does. Success. She works. Excellent. So I've just got to do some of this cable that runs across here to tidy it up, pin it down. I've been using hot milk glue and stuff and it seems to be working alright as far as holding things down. I'll probably put some cable ties around this to tie those together and then pin those down with glue as well. Do something with it. So I've done this cloth tape here. I thought it was about time I used it. So I wrapped this wire in cloth tape so it can move around a little bit and it actually stops through a bit of abrasion and things like that. So if it is moves them around, gives it an extra layer of protection and it um, doesn't scratch the circuit board and stuff like that as well. So it should be alright. I reckon that'll do it. I may need to do something over here. I'm not quite sure. I might stick some tape around that just to cover that bit down. But yeah, it's basically it I think. Something I thought I'd better record on here is that I was going to cut the track over here, then I realised the track actually runs across over here as well and goes underneath these and comes across, pops up over here to go to this module. This module runs off apparently 3 to 13 volts is the operating range of that module. So running straight off that supply rail is still fine with the batteries and the charging circuit at 9 volts, stuff like that. It's still within spec of what that module can do. These modules are unobtainium, we can't get them, they're not, they're not made anymore. So if you blow that up, that's it, it's gone. <laughs> so don't blow that up. So what I noticed is that power supply rail is coming across over here. So I had to cut the track over here as well. But I'd already cut the track here at that point. I wish I'd noticed it like literally one minute earlier. Because <laughs> then I would cut the track up here instead. So I would cut the track there, run a wire down to the here. So it's on the opposite side of the cut. So the, the pad from that connector there for the power supply is going straight to the batteries and to the switch. And the opposite side of that cut is obviously then going to the other side of the switch to turn the thing on. So when you turn the switch on, it powers up this side of the circuitry and that side of the circuitry at the same time. Thought I'd better recall that though in case I didn't mention it and it was a bit, ended up being a bit of a problem. So I'm just reassembling it now. Um, this has got these little O-rings that sit over these posts, which are always a pain because they tend to fall off as you put it back together and stuff like that. So. It's not the best, it's just a spacer there to make sure the board sits in the right place. And uh, yeah, they can be a pain, they tend to pop off. Some plastic spacers would have been nicer, but that's what they've used. Alright, so let's fold this over. Put the screws in for all the spacers fall out. Now these little plastic posts in here are all cracked. Every single one of these posts is cracked. So I'm not over tightening it either because I don't want to risk cracking those further. I'm just going to get it so it just beds down onto the screw. So it's just tight and tick tight and that's it. There we go. There's the switch. Turn it on. We have power. Great. Plug the charger in. Plug it into power. See if the thing goes bang. See if it powers up still. Does still power up so that's a good sign. It's not short out anyway. Excellent. So one thing I actually wanted to do with this is to actually add a battery charge indicator. I could have like put it underneath here or something like that. I still may do that. I've actually ordered some from AliExpress to actually maybe add one on. I'll, if they turn up in time, I'll put them on. But I've got some already, but they're for lithium ion cells. They've actually got the wrong voltage ranges. They go up to like 8.4 volts max and 6.6 .6 minimum. So with these batteries basically fully charged, they only show like three quarters on the scale and for once I've had a bit of draining like maybe if you're like 75% charge I only show 50% on the scale and it will probably show flat before it actually is flat so because the voltage ranges are not really right I'm not going to use those 
the ones I've seen on AliExpress, they're actually adjustable. We can choose different voltage ranges. So it looks like I can actually get one of those units and slit to city with voltage range on it, which will then suit these batteries. So that's what I'm planning on doing. If they arrive in time, I'll fit one. Anyway, there you go. I'm happy with that. That works. Oh, I'm very happy with that. I'm sure the owner will be happy with it as well. Saved them a lot of hassle. And there's no big ugly external battery pack, which is the route I was going to take originally, was to have an external battery pack on the back of it, but that would have not been very nice. Maybe it'll be of use to you, that reference information about how to do this modification. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Maybe people don't care. Who knows? I thought it might be interesting anyway, make a video out of it. Other videos down below to watch. Subscribe over there if you're already subscribed. And there's a Patreon support link over there if you want to help support the channel and help me to buy bits of test gear and all that to fix and do videos about. Catch you later.